Hi, my name is Scott, the Miniature Manic, and in this video, we're gonna roast your hobby setups. And toast them. What up, Mini Family? You guys submitted pictures of your hobby setup for me to make fun of ruthlessly. <laughs> but Amber thought it'd be a good idea if she was involved to lighten the situation a little bit. Say some positive things, because I'm in a really destructive mood right now. So let's begin. I haven't seen these yet. Amber actually sorted these all out, and we're gonna look at them one by one, so let's do it. Apparently there's 77 in the bed, so. There's 77. How many got submitted? 200. 200, okay. <laughs> a bunch of my subscribers are apparently masochists. <laughs> no, this, this guy is painting in a literal bookshelf, people. How do you even, like there is no space for your legs to go. What are you, are you just sitting there like this the entire day, just kind of like. Yeah, try to say something nice about this one. Um, there's a window, so there's natural light. Dude, what is going on on this second to bottom shelf here? What is down here? Oh, it's here? a cabinet. Does that make it better? At least he closes it. <laughs> so you can't see the absolute <laughs> yeah. insanity. He probably lives in this thing too. He probably sleeps on the top shelf. You know, maybe it's not a window. That's like part of the shelf. Yeah. So. So you, do you take back what you said previously? I like that you can close up the bottom part. Nice. And hide the mess. Good save. <laughs> Lord almighty, what is going on in this wall? This is like every single birthday card this person's ever recruited since they were four years old, just pinned to the wall. There's some motivational things in there though. Okay, Keep them motivated. Let's see, tell the negative voices that meet inside your head to sit down and shut up. What if they're too loud? And where's the eat, pray, love? Follow your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you actually paint the miniatures? There's like no space for you to like just put your hands down and like actually paint something. That's what I wonder about a lot of these that I've seen. <laughs> every single surface <laughs> is just covered and stuff. Wait, did you want to include that? I know. I, know. <laughs> I had to, I had to. He knows what he's doing. I mean, how can we not comment about the, the, the elephant in the picture here? The four monitors, like this is, this is unreal. Oh, the paints, what? they're just piled. Oh my gosh, yeah. They're just like stacked on stack. I appreciate how he put his computer on top of his desk because he cares about the dust, okay? That's attention to detail. And he actually has space on the desk to paint. Okay, yeah, shout out to this guy. Shout out to this guy. <laughs> this guy's beating you all, okay? He has <laughs> space to paint. Welcome to the dungeon, mother <laughs> Again, all the desk surface is just like totally dedicated to like supplies. There's nowhere to actually paint. Also the <laughs> ash. Oh my God. <laughs> all the cigarette butts right there, dude. Oh, I can smell it now. <laughs> it looks nice. Like he has his cup of coffee, his cigarettes. It's a nice, Nice time. Do you like coffee and cigarettes, Amber? I like the idea of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're dealing with more of a hobby room here instead of a hobby desk. There is some serious hardware going on over here in the in the corner. But I think the bigger story here is guy uses a dentist's. This is not a telescope. What do you call it? Microscope. This thing? And dentists don't use microscopes <laughs> like that. <laughs> I feel like whenever I put on like some of those like nerd like magnifying goggles. Uh, I feel like I just get totally dissociated with reality and have no idea where my hand ends and begins and I can no longer paint miniatures. Uh, so that thing seems like it would just be like that times 30. It's nice that he has his like 3D printers in a separate spot, a little station over there. Separate spot, yeah. <laughs> if I had those there, there'd be like resin on the floor leading to my painting desk. Not everybody is as messy as you. What do you think about, okay, all right, I hear you. What do you think about the, the giant band of just CFL lighting in the middle of the room? I, I mean, I don't like fluorescent lights, so. I'm just trying to get Amber to <laughs> this, because I know, I know she can do it, okay? I'm married to this person, I mean, okay? there's boxes everywhere with stuff in them, there so. There we go, there we go, take it! There's a Miniac poster, <laughs> okay, yeah, 10 yeah, points. Yeah, 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 yeah there we go. <laughs> also, that is the deepest, deepest drawer for paints. <laughs> he probably has to like excavate whenever he wants to find anything to use. Yeah, and they're just thrown in there. <laughs> yes. Not really taking great advantage of the white storage things. <laughs> They're just entirely empty, and this one drawer has every paint this person owns. Also, loving the Tostitos jar for the water. I think that is, this feels like picking on toddlers at this point. <laughs> Why are there three open paint pots? <laughs> I'm a fairly new subscriber, oh. and you're one of my painting idols. A 13. Oh, oh it no. is a 13. -year -old. Oh, no. Now I feel like an <laughs> asshole. I'm sorry, Derek. You are a 13 year old. 
Roast me, Scott. Please. Are you sure you want this? <laughs> I love how he has like his art box from like second grade that he used to put all his like colored pencils in and he's still using it to this day as a wet palette. Nice. Works. I what, mean, what is this character right here? What is that? Oh, it's from Despicable oh, Me. I, oh, okay. I can't really talk as someone who uses like a uh, Pokemon cup from like the 90s. Okay. After admittedly shamefully roasting a 13 year old setup, I think it's time to introduce this week's sponsor, Zuntalis Battle Royale, brought to us by the folks over at Dice Heads. In this youth-oriented skirmish war game, you take control of a guild of adventurers pitted against another in a quick turn-based combat and objective-seeking game. In this Kickstarter campaign, you can pick up over 100 pre-supported and unsupported 3D printable miniatures that come in both STL and lychee format. These characters represent the different guilds you can form to play in Zune Talus. You also get 12 different scenarios to play, a PDF of the rule book, and a set of tokens to use in the game, and a full character card with skirmish stats and a painting illustration for each miniature in case you or your youngling need some guidance. You also get over 100 3D printable files of scattered terrain, some of which are based on the open lock tile system, a popular terrain solution for tabletop RPGs. Combat is a mix of ranged and melee with a magic user in each guild, but you're not only trying to take down the enemy guild, players will work together towards different objectives as well. Your guild can feature characters such as animals, classic fantasy, or even battle mechs, so you have lots of options. Dice Heads has run seven successfully funded Kickstarter campaigns, so you know you're in good hands. The campaign is live right now, and you can find a link in the description to pick up your copy of Zune Talus Battle Royale for you and the little goblins in your life. All right, back to abusing my subscribers. I love the little terrain area over on the side here, and you can see that he has like some kind of lights rigged up to the ceiling to illuminate it. So he probably uses it also as some kind of like a little photography area. It's actually pretty cool. I like also the little areas to have uh, miniatures on display. This one over here on the left though is missing some bottom trim uh, unceremoniously. <laughs> But also, I didn't even notice. That. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I really like that built-in." It's a bit of a work in progress. We get it. Uh, uh, yeah, we know that. Yeah, <laughs> I guess maybe the a problem might be is that there's no glass or any kind of enclosure in front of these miniatures. So that over time, they're just going to get dustier and dustier and dustier, and that's like really hard to deal with because minis have just so many tiny little nooks and crannies that they're kind of hard to like dust off. Can you dry airbrush it? Uh, maybe. It, de it really depends on how stuck down the dust is. But yeah, that it's, I mean, say you got an army of like 200, even if you could airbrush it off, that would just take forever. You wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. The corner is, um, a hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> Brother. I truly don't know how you get anything done in this space. There's not much... I get positive this. to say. <laughs> right, I get this. You know, every once in a while, you, you you have a need for some kind of storage. You grab a random piece of Tupperware from the kitchen, and then over time, you just collect, like, basically the entire kitchen's worth of, like, one-off offshoots of Tupperware. Whoa, my God, dude. What the f What is going on I here, know, dude? dude? They said the stickers started off as a joke or something, this but, man, is, is it distracting. This is going to be an NC-17 rated video after this little hobby desk that we're looking at here. <laughs> the point of this desk is that it is a surface for stickers now. It's no longer a desk for anything other than that, right? I like the touch of the stickers, but it does seem pretty distracting for a mini painting. What do you think about the subject matter of the stickers? Sexy. Yeah. <laughs> man, I can't even see the models. <laughs> like what? Those are, those are those are there's models over there yeah. apparently. He's got two lamps on his desk, but they're like six feet apart. So like even if you like angle them inward, they wouldn't even be like illuminating anything. I think in the it's for, evenly. I think it's for two people. Oh okay, fair. Because any other person in the world would want to paint at this desk other than whoever made this monstrosity. No, like, yeah, it is. There's two cups of water, but then there's like all the red solo cups of water too. You're prepared. Yeah, for what? <laughs> wow, this guy's just like painting in an, like a literal bucket. How far down do you gotta go to get paint, my dude? Does that take you like a good like 30 seconds to get down there? Also, wait. Oh. Wait, no way, dude. Is this hobby light a uh, uh, cell phone flashlight on a fucking box? Yeah. <laughs> That's not even doing anything for you. All that's doing is just backlighting the miniature. You have to like get like all the way up against the wall for it to like do anything. I feel bad because like maybe that's all he has to work with. You okay. Know? I mean, people signed up for this, Amber. Okay. Okay. Whoa, dude, this guy's got freaking suits of armor in his hobby room. Dude. Oh yeah, I meant to put this in the good one. But you can do can can I do that? I don't even care about the hobby stuff. This is sick. 
Okay, again, no glass in front of the minis. They're going to get dusty AF over time. You know, I'm curious about the number of people that have, like, their desk, like, ready to either, like, be on the computer in front of them. Like, so they have, like, monitors and a computer in their desk. Or they're, like, ready to, like, live stream. Like, I don't know how, like, important of a thing that is in 2022. Like, how many of you guys are actually, like, doing, like, paint hangouts virtually? Those cups, though. Ooh, wow, those are... Dirty cups there, bro. They're disgusting. That is That's eons. why I put that in here because it's so nasty. <laughs> the eons of paint I've collected in these cups, dude. You Maybe put this is... in the bad section? I feel like... <sighs> you and I have different opinions of bad <laughs> hobby setups. This is a freaking sick setup. He has so much storage. It's like all kind of like neatly organized. He has some things that are obvious work in progress. But like he's got so much nice storage and organization here. That is what our workshop could look like. Really? If you were organized. With hobby stuff? But instead, our workshop looks like the worst one you're gonna see probably on here. Or worse, we what? can't even walk in there. You're supposed the to The lights the don't even work anymore because Scott can't change a light bulb and neither can I because it didn't work, I don't know. You're supposed to be the nice one. I'm not nice to you. And this is giving me an organizational boner, like 100%. Yeah, he's got good org. He's got good org. Looks pretty organized though. It does, but like, that light is looking weak AF. There's a little airbrush station. A little airbrush station over there. You got a little cardboard box from Amazon that you cut up. That's cute, Eric. Very nice. Actually, I've seen a lot of people with that. And I wish you did that because you get airbrush particles everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I have no comment. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's got every kind of electronic you could have connected to his desk somewhere. I suppose when this person like gets into that like painting desk, they have to like kind of like they have to like get in like, and then they can like get under like all the electronics and they can, they can, then they can do their hobbying, right? Shout out to GW for creating such amazing box art that they could be attached to the wall as art apparently. There was another one. Oh, oh, picture. oh. oh that just makes it worse. <laughs> you know, a lot of people have these tubes. Oh look, he has it for his 3D printer. Okay, okay. I, yeah, no Unlike might... somebody else uh, who's trying to kill us. I have an air purifier running in the same room, okay? Apparently this is a goldsmith desk, which I've always kind of thought about this. Like other hobbies like like watch fixing and things that like, you know, jewelry desks, they have like really specialized desks for their craft. And I wonder if there would be some kind of improvements you could make to a miniature painting desk to like make it easier to use. Like I've always thought that if the front foot of the desk could like rotate down 45 so I could rest my hands on it so I wasn't resting my hands on the edge of a desk, That'd be like so much nicer. The stool, how do you uh, how do you sit on this thing for any longer than 45 minutes and not just like feel like every bone in your butt is breaking? 45 minutes, that's even too long. <laughs> I love the touch with the monitors, that's nice. This guy has an, like an actual drill press in his hobby room, that's pretty extreme. You know, I'm noticing something about a lot of these spaces, they could really do with a Miniac branded cutting mat which can be yours at Miniac.co. Um, also, he has a duchess too. Oh, nice, look at that. And there's room under this desk for his legs. Look at that, and there's space to paint models. And there's a dog bed, and there's a little fireplace. Oh, wow, this, look at that, comfort. 10 Definitely. out of 10. 10 out of 10, dead out of 10. Okay, this guy's got his hobby set up in his actual garage, right next to his weightlifting setup, so after he can paint some minis, he can get his bump on. The, his paints are all nicely lined up. I was just gonna ask, is this how it normally is? Yeah. Are these paints lined up like this normally? I think some people definitely stage these photos. Yeah, because I'm looking at this cable management over here and that situation does not line up with the painting <laughs> situation. Also another uncomfortable chair. Do you want to paint misery? Do, do you want to hurt after an hour of painting? Get a nice chair, sit with a straight back, and lift some weights! I think at some point in this video I said, welcome to the, the dungeon or something like that. That was that was fake news. This is the dungeon, dude. There's like no lighting anywhere in the entire brick shed other than this one little task lamp light. I don't know, I'm getting like England, English vibes or like European vibes. I wonder if he's from Europe. Yeah. It's kind of cute in that sense. But I feel like you, you take the cuteness and you ruin it by adding resin 3D printers into it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and like a cardboard box for airbrushing. <laughs> ah, yes, the Apple Barrel Paint Enthusiast. What's that cup of white? I'm gonna guess it's snow flocking. I'm gonna hope it's snow flocking. Yeah, there's not anything that I can say that's positive. Wow, 
Amber can't even say anything positive about this desk. Okay, I have to admit something about this video that's a little bit selfish. I actually want to make this video because I want to set up my own hobby setup in my house that I don't like film at, and I wanted to get ideas. So I thought that I could dunk on the people who were terrible and then steal ideas from people who were good. I think it's kind of important to remember that not everyone is gonna like be hobbying in the same place all at the same time. Like some people are like truckers and they wanna like hobby like in their truck. Um, and so, foreshadowing. Oh, is it actually foreshadowing? Okay. <laughs> this person has like a nice couch set up that they can take this tray and put it on their lap and then, and then paint like next to like maybe their significant other while they're watching TV or something like that. So I really appreciate that. It's like, this is like a really efficient use of space. Yeah, it doesn't take up a lot of space and you're able to still do your hobby at home. Yeah, no, it's really nice. no bad words to say about this. Whoa! Oh yeah, this one's freaking amazing. Sick little D&D &D setup right here and you got a nice little economical hobby desk right over in the corner. Oh, I thought that desk, that table could be for his friends to paint at too. Oh yeah, that too. But like this smacks of like, here's where we play games. This is this this is the person who took over the entire basement and converted it into like a hobby like, like floor. This is pretty sick. You know, at least it's organized though. Yeah. If you were to take over our whole basement, it would not look like this ever. Okay. This is There's a, been proof. This is a mini a community roast, not a Scott roast. Okay. I'm gonna have to ask you to dial I'm it I'm here back. to roast him. A nice clean setup again. Um, I love the lockers. Those are so cool. There's yeah, they're 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 cute. I like the magnet thing here on the wall to like attach, maybe like work in progress things. I always appreciate storage solutions that don't take up horizontal space. So they don't require you to put a desk anywhere or any kind of surface, they attach to the wall, which is why like on my main set, I've always had paints attached to the wall because I don't want them to be on my desk, taking up my desk surface. So like this like whip area is, is pretty clever for the, for the minis. Look at that case. Oh. oh, nice. And it has some kind of covering on it too. Yeah, I know. Um, that's nice, okay. So that's kind of like a shadow box, but a shadow box with lights in it. Um, that's pretty cool actually. There's a lot of hobby desks in here that use storage solutions like Felix's here, where he has like paint storage on top with drawers below. And I'm kind of curious how well this actually works out for storage because this is the kind of solution you buy when you don't exactly know what you need to store, but like you're gonna buy things that will probably work. I imagine there are probably a lot of unused storage uh, drawers or probably like mixed and matched things. The other solution for storage is you like figure out what you have, you put them in piles of logical like combinations, like these things are the same size, these things I use often together, these things are the same category, and then you find storage solutions that work for those things. That takes a lot longer, but I think ends in a scenario that's much more organized and much more effective. They might not look as pretty. They might not look as pretty. Because this looks really nice. This looks really nice. And I'm not saying that this isn't effective. I'm just like, I'm just kind of like theory crafting. We're also seeing a lot of setups that use pegboard along the walls, which uh, I appreciate, especially for the mandatory Cholula. Uh, yeah, yeah. I love that. But also it just looks amazing. It looks really nice. But again, I love putting things on the wall. Like it's okay to put like a couple, like four holes in the wall and just patch it up later with some, some spackle. If you're renting, maybe you can't do that. But if you're owning, like, I don't see why you wouldn't owning. do that. Owning. Owning. I used to have a hat when I was little that said own across the front of it because I was a piece of So <laughs> nice and neat. I know. I love how he has the four vintage blisters right here, almost as like decoration um, and the Gorka Morka thing. I love it. it. You know, I never thought about that, but using like hobby stuff like as art to like decorate your hobby space, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I love the tube paint solution on the side here. He has a bunch of tube paints and he clips them uh, to a binder clip and then hangs them oh. on something. Uh, I really like that. That's a fun solution for tube paints, which are kind of like a little bit awkward. You either have to get like a hanger that works with their cap or you have to like do this. And this this is better in my opinion because you can put a binder clip on any tube paint, you know? Yeah, it works for any of them. Yeah. Oh my, look at that cricket setup, dude. You got rolls on rolls, dude. What I noticed though was this like space age like compressor down here in the corner. Like, do you wake up everybody in your house when you fire that baby up? Oh, there's a pressure pot back there too. Oh, and it's an up desk. That's nice. This is a this is a feature rich hobby area. I love this little craft area. Do you want to make a hobby room in our house? No. <laughs> Sag. 
Okay, this is the foreshadowing that Amber was talking about. This is a person who paints in a commercial motor vehicle. They're painting on the road. So their setup is highly mobile. Um, you can even see the cushioning, of, I'm assuming, with the side of the, the, the truck cab. We've got a little airbrush set up here. You got We're, everything you need. Props to you for doing it on the road. You know, there used to be this, this person in our Facebook group for the, for the podcast who was homeless, and they would paint at Taco Bell. Oh, we got a secret lab chair. Okay. Oh, and a curved monitor. I know. That's why. God damn. I love a good nook. You know, I love settling into a good nook here. Well, that's what yours is going to be at home. See, it's not a nook, though, because it's not like walls on all three sides. Yeah. You know, I want a Harry Potter closet. That's what I want for my hobby area. Oh, we got the vintage paint more minis cup. Oh, we yeah, got... I know. I saw that. Yeah, you can't get that anymore. See, this is the exact kind of thing I was talking about earlier where this guy figured out what he uses and then found storage solutions that worked for it. So he's got finger cots, he's got his Tamiya masking tape, he's got his paints, his paint brushes, his clippers, and every single one of these things has a solution that works for it specifically. Sure, it can work for other things, but it works very nicely for the thing it was intended for. It's got a plant and air purifier. Nice. Good for your health. He also has lights here. Uh, that I think were based on the old Adam Savage tested video where he made like uh, these really nice hobby lights attached to goosenecks. So this is an airbrush setup that he uh, takes elsewhere. Okay. That he himself laser cut. That is sick. Um, and then the paint setup is inside. Wait, so my question is, if you're always going to the same place to airbrush, why not just set up there permanently instead of having a portable setup? Maybe it's outside. Okay. You know, like, and you can't leave your stuff outside. Okay, fair enough. He airbrushes by the light of the sun. We save the best for last. The best for last. <laughs> Look at that little guy! See, I thought his name was, at first, I thought it was Kingslayer. I didn't, th <laughs> I didn't think it was Kingslayer. Look at the doggy. I know, the doggy's so pretty. Yeah. We're not gonna talk about anything regarding your hobby setup if you have a dog in the picture. Oh, dude, the squad is out, dude. I love it. The dog on the chair is dude, so how, cute. Dude, how hard was it to get the dog in the chair? That's what I wanna know. <laughs> it looks so cute. Oh, the mochi. puppy has a one black brown eye and one blue eye. It's a very groovy mutation. Oh, I love the the glass cabinet there. Oh, that's kind of nice. Just glass front with a little door on there. Mochi is way cooler than that cabinet, though. To be fair, got a little cat bed on the desk. I love that. That's dangerous. I feel like you're inviting a travesty. No, but look, he's being good. He's just laying on it. Yeah, in this still image, that cat is being good. Oh, what's this little what? What futuristic Whoa, for box. fumes. For fumes, I bet. Yeah, but like, where do the fumes go? There's a fan, I and see. then somewhere. I see. Please tell us if this is your setup, It's got like, what that is. It's got like buttons on it and stuff. Is this like a time machine, dude? That looks amazing. It does look amazing. I kind of want to know. Okay, that'll wrap up this first episode of us roasting your desk setups. I hope you guys know this is all in just good fun. I'm not trying to shame anyone for what they can afford or what they can set up. We're just having a little bit of, uh, you know. I'm gonna say we're having some laughs. We're having some laughs. If you could see Scott's setup sometimes, you'd probably laugh at it too. <laughs> you can see it live every Tuesday from 1 to 4 p.m. at twitch.tv slash miniac. There were a lot of people that sent in photos of their desks for us to roast, and of course we couldn't get to all of them, but thank you everyone who participated, sending in pictures, we really appreciate it. It was over 200. Yeah, it was over 200. We had a lot of fun doing this, and I hope you guys had a lot of fun watching it. If you guys like the channel and you want to support it, there are a number of ways you can do it. All things linked down in the description below, namely a Patreon campaign where you can get a bunch of fun rewards, like access to a Discord server where you and I can hang out any day of the week and chat about your miniature painting projects, or who has the best hobby desk. Alternatively, you can buy hobby tools that I recommend. You can also buy my model, the Duchess, and a course that I made teaching you how to paint the model, brush stroke for brush stroke. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to paint my mana!